of the transportation. So he went to the car dealer and the salesperson talked to him and said to him, you're going to need an all-wheel drive vehicle. Now, remember, Florida and Georgia is flat. Alaska's not. And the weather was going to turn. And so he took the advice of this gentleman, and he got himself this little SUV. Now, got to be December and January, and the weather was bad. And the roads were horrendous. And so he got up very early in the morning to get a good jump on all of this and to make sure he could get to work on time. And so he ventured out in his little SUV, armed with all of the information that he had and all the skill that he had acquired in learning to drive back in Florida, Georgia. As he started down one of the hills, the mountain, as he thought, all of a sudden, the road appeared to the right. The SUV did not. So he tried with everything that he knew, all the techniques to keep it on the road, but nothing worked. And quickly, he found himself in a ditch on the side of the road. Not to worry, he remembered the, the, the instructions that he had given when he bought the car. <clears throat> Put it in all the drive, so he pushed the button. And as he did, he was trying to get out of the ditch he was in, but nothing was happening. So he remembered, if you get in real trouble, you hit four-wheel drive, so he pushed that button. And he got to the engine, and when he did, he realized that all four wheels started to turn. But he wasn't going anywhere. In fact, all that happened is he kept getting deeper and deeper and deeper in the hole. Now he was frustrated. Now he was a little bit frightened because no one was coming along the road. This went on for about 15 minutes or so, and all of a sudden, this big truck came by with a plow on the front of it. It was one of the highway maintenance folks. And as he saw it coming, the amber lights flashing, he said to himself, if that truck would have came along about 20 minutes earlier, I wouldn't be here. So he was lamenting his poor fortune and probably thinking not so kind thoughts to the driver until all of a sudden the truck got out of here and stopped. And just like the story of the Good Samaritan, this fellow climbed out of the truck, older gentleman, went back, saw this guy in the ditch, and said to him, he asked him the question that makes no sense whatsoever. And you know what that question was? Do you need some help? <laughs> Because what's the answer? Oh, no, I'm fine. I'll just sit here in the ditch for a while, right? He said, well, yeah, I can do some help. So the fellow said, it's not to worry. I know how to do this. So what he did is he went back to the truck and he got a big rope. And it had a hook on the end of it. This wasn't the first time he'd done this. He put the one hook on the end of this guy's SUV on the front and he hooked the other on the back of his truck. And then he said to him, he said, I need to pull forward. You need to get back into your little SUV. He says, and as I pull forward, I want you to put the car in here, and I want you to drive. He says, and I will pull you out, and you will drive right up out of here. So this fellow from Florida said, great idea. So sure enough, the guy gets back in the truck, starts driving the great big truck forward. As he's pulling towards the major truck, the guy in the little SUV, he puts his foot on the gas. And he's going to drive his truck slowly out of the ditch. But it's not working. The road gets tight, and finally the fellow driving the big maintenance truck calls out the window and he says, put some mustard on it. Now you know what that means, right? Fortunately, even the guy from that side knew what that meant. What does that mean when somebody tells you to put some mustard on it? Hey. Step on the gas. Put some energy into it. Get behind it. Put some mustard on it. You know, I did a little bit of studying about that. I did a little bit of research, and what I found out is, is that putting, putting mustard on something is actually a term that seems to have originated in baseball. Now, you know, I didn't start there. Some of you, I know, because you would think right away, I'd be right on the baseball thing, right? What does it mean when they tell the pitcher to put some mustard on it? Throw it as hard as you can. In fact, the Urban Dictionary defines putting mustard on something. To put mustard on it means to give it all of your energy, to give it vim and vigor, to give it, to give it everything you've got. Put some mustard on it. 
Now, friends, I think that connection that they make with baseball is because the other thing that you do in a baseball game is you eat. And what do you mean in a baseball game? Hot dogs. And what, does he, what do people put on hot dogs? Mustard. Mustard. Now, some people, I was talking to the early stories, they put ketchup on them. I'm like, cringe when I heard that. <laughs> and, and some people even put all sorts of things on it. But when it's not, people put mustard. And you know why they put mustard on it? Because mustard is, 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 it's got some zest to it, some sin to it, some spice to it. Let me ask you, has anybody here ever eat a hot dog plain? Yeah. Exactly. Oh, really? We got some plain hot dog? For <laughs> the most part, what happens is you put mustard on it, we say, give it some extra juice. Really give it a push to give it something that gives it meaning and energy and direction. Put some mustard on it. Now, friends, you didn't come to church this morning to hear me give you a lesson on how to do defensive driving in the snow. In fact, we probably have some experts on the subject here this morning, correct? You also didn't come here to get a pitching lesson or eager to get a color. Why am I talking to you about mustard? Because you came here today to be guided and led by the words of the Holy Scripture. And what is the one thing that we heard about today? We're hearing the words of Jesus. And you know what I discovered from Jesus? Jesus has a real affinity for mustard. He likes it. If he doesn't like to eat it, he surely likes to talk about it. Because both of these folks this morning shared from two different gospel accounts the story of Jesus talking about mustard seeds. Two different stories, two different venues, two different messages. Jesus talks about mustard when he's talking about these parables as a way to illustrate, as a metaphor, as an analogy of how the kingdom of God works. Both of these are what we call parables of the kingdom. Jesus begins that passage, the passage in advance said, the kingdom of heaven is like. And what does he say? The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard. Now, I want you to think about this for a minute. I don't know what you think of when you think of Jesus, but let me ask you, what did Jesus do for a living? Carpenter. Now let me ask you a question. Was Jesus a wiggler or a carpenter? See, someone who whittles has fine motor skills, correct? A carpenter was somebody in those days, particularly, but even now, what does a carpenter do? They build houses and frame things in. Jesus was the guy that was framing the house. If anything, maybe you think this idea that maybe he built some furniture and things. But basically, when you think of the hands of Jesus, you think of the hands of Jesus as somebody who dealt with a lot of fine and intricate things, or someone who was framing heavy wood. Which way do you go? I say that because now I want you to go back to the story of Jesus talking about the mustard seed. Because when Jesus talks about the mustard seed, we get a picture of that. It's kind of like when the children serve an object lesson. And what happens is, is we tend to think, I'm looking and I think, how you're a teacher, right? If you're going to teach someone, or they're younger like that, you show them something, correct? So Jesus, with the hands of Jesus, the hands of partner, what do you think he did? What picture do you have of Jesus when he tells the story of the mustard Is he holding it in his fingertips? Or is he instead perhaps reaching into the bag? I was talking this morning and I had a couple of farmers with me this morning and they would tell you when you go out and don't plant seeds, they actually plant grain. There's a parable that Jesus would later on tell about the sower that went out to sow. Do you think the sower went out to plant one seed at a time? The odds are very good as Jesus was coming down that mountain and he said, you know what, it's like these seeds. And he reached in the bag. He didn't pull out one mustard seed. He had a whole handful of them. Picture that now in the hand of Jesus. He's talking about this mustard seed. Now, does anybody know how big a mustard seed is? I love this one out too. This is good. You can find everything on Google, right? A mustard seed is less than one tenth of an inch. Now you know why this big carpenter is not holding this little seed in his fingertips. 
He probably has a whole handful of them. And what he does is he shows them to everybody like a good teacher. He shows them to them and he separates them all out so you only have one showing. He has them all in his hand. And that's when he says, the kingdom of heaven is like this. Single, solitary, tiny little muscles. Jesus also has an affinity for things that are small. Things that other folks think are insignificant. When the children come to Jesus, when the rest of the disciples cast them aside, Jesus said that the little children come to me, forbid them not, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This morning, we are blessed. And we are blessed in a very special way. Because we have a little one today. Theodore, who's about to be baptized. And so what happens is, is Theodore has come today, let me ask you this. Is Theodore insignificant? No. No. Not at all. I mean, he is absolutely beautiful. I mean, you know. But I'm going to tell you what. Since he has such a special place in our hearts, and in the life of the church, Next week, Theodore, this week he's baptized. Next week he's going to be on our session, right? <laughs> and next month he's preaching. <laughs> we know. Just like the kingdom of heaven is like that seed, that that child has a special place that needs to grow and be nurtured. But so what happens is, is yes, they're special, and yes, they have been given a great gift. And Theodore probably has been given so many gifts that we will just learn about as he grows up and lives. But for right now, in the grander picture of things, he's just a little thought. But Jesus said that's important. That's important because each and every one of us is important. In the midst of all of those grains and all of those seeds, each one is vital and it matters. You know, we were talking earlier today, and we were talking about baptism. And in some traditions, in some traditions, they don't baptize them. Because they wait until they be old enough to make a commitment to the Lord. Because they have to stand and make a commitment to the Lord. But you know, there's a reason why we baptize the children. And partially because we will ask you folks to make that commitment. But even then, the real reason behind our baptizing of infants is because this is a covenant today. And this is a promise. And this is a promise that God makes to the earth. Jesus said these words. He said, you did not choose me. I chose you. And today, is a living testimony and witness of the fact that God chose you. It is a decision that God made. That God loves this little child. In fact, at the moment of baptism, it is the Lord God that says, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. And what a blessing that is. And yes, he will grow. And yes, he will that nurture and love for all those people around him. But the blessing is his. The promise of God is for you and for your children and your children's children, for those that are near and those that are far off. That promise is his. Not because of anything that he has done or that we have done, but simply because God loves him. And how much more important is anyone than that? Then God picks you out and says, I love you. Well, the kingdom of heaven is like that little mustard seed. Now, it's an interesting thing. I think that Jesus deliberately picked mustard seed for two reasons. The first reason is simple. Because mustard has a spiciness about it, doesn't it? Mustard has a way of giving things zest and life. When you put mustard on something, it's got energy, it's got vitality. Get behind it and make it dry. To be filled with God's Holy Spirit. Because in the midst of being blessed, there is also a challenge. 
There's a challenge and a responsibility. There's a challenge. Jesus said, go into the world, make disciples of all creatures, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's what we've been called to do. And that's what we do today, and that's what we will continue to do. That part of being part of the kingdom of heaven is to be not only the mustard, but to be the salt of the earth, to be the leaven that will cause everything to rise. There is a calling and there is a responsibility and there is a way to use the gifts that God has given us as we grow. And I think that's the other reason Jesus is so focused on the mustard seed. Because as he said in Mark 4, it is the smallest one, isn't it? One tenth of an inch. Seemingly insignificant. And yet what does he say the mustard seed will do? Did you hear what that said? He says, it grows. And it grows. Let me ask you this. Do you have any gardeners here? Nobody gardens? There we go. When you plant a tomato plant, how high does it get? I do it. Not that high. All right. <laughs> me neither. That's why I stay away from it. <clears throat> but even if you're successful, how high do you get? that big? Maybe that big. You have a time up. When you plant a corn stalk, right, how big does it get? Okay. Plant a vineyard, and they grow. You plant a rose bush, and it gets bushy, right? And it's there we go. Let me ask you this. When you plant a mustard seed, how big does it get? I don't know. I haven't planted one. But I will take the word of Jesus for this one, okay? Did you see what he said in Mark 4? I'll bring you back to it just real quick. He says this. He says, the kingdom of God Someone scatters the seed of the ground. He says in here, okay, it is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yes, when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs. It becomes a tree. It puts forth large branches. Think about that. The kingdom of heaven is like that. That wonderful individual solitary life is like that. Because at the moment, we look at this little one and he is just laughing and smiling. But what God can do with those lives is nothing short of miraculous. Think about that. What the kingdom of heaven is like. He goes on to say that not only do the branches grow, not only does it bear fruit, but it does all sorts of things that no one would ever think that that tree could do. Provide shade for folks. Enables the birds to bed. The nest in it. Think about this. There are so many things in life that can be accomplished that we don't even realize we're doing. That's the blessing. That is the blessing of that little child. And that little child of the little child is in all of us. That we can grow. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can grow and do great things. Isn't that what was said? I heard Luke share that one, right? If you have faith like that mustard seed, you can do what did he say? You can do anything. You know, how, you know how significant that was? Where was Jesus when he said that? On the mountain. I mean, they were climbing up the mountain. They could realize that I was just climbing the mountain a couple of weeks ago. The Appalachian Trail, we were climbing up the mountains down in Virginia. And we're getting up to the top of Man, we climbed. I'm looking at my wife. To the point, it's like, okay, we're done today. You get a whole new appreciation of climbing a mountain when you're on it. Jesus said, you have much faith like that mustard seed. You can move this mountain. All things are possible to those who believe. So my brothers and sisters, this day, let us rejoice and give thanks. Let us rejoice and give thanks for the blessing that God has given us. Let us rejoice and give thanks that God has chosen each and every one of us. No matter how great no matter how small. And that we are but one seed in a whole bag full of grain. Think about what amazing things we can accomplish for the kingdom of God to work together through the power of the Holy Spirit. And never forget this, friends. Never forget this. That what the power of that mustard seed is, the power that is there, is the great energy that comes with it. Don't ever forget that as you serve Jesus Christ, it is okay. In fact, it is required. Put a little mustard on it. Get behind it. And serve the Lord with energy, intelligence, imagination.
nation and life. Amen. Amen. We have heard God's word read and preached. A lot of times what we will do is we'll say something like the Apostles' Creed. We'll do something to affirm our faith. There is nothing that affirms our faith more than having someone come forward to receive the sacrament of baptism. 